We've got um, 10 or 15 minutes now for some questions um, for Sharon, Kirsten, Matt and Anita. Now, some questions uh, have come in. Some There's been some fantastic um, uh, uh, discussion on the chat and there's some kind of questions that have been put in there. If people could, if possible, put their questions into the Q on the Q&A tab, that would be fantastic. Um, um, but we'll try and take some of those that have come in from in, in uh, on, on the chat tab as well. Um, so the first question is very um, uh, a practical question from Fawn Leith. Um, uh, up to what age can an infant be admitted to the unit with their mother? Perhaps, uh, uh, Kirsten, you would be best to take that question. What age do we take um, uh, uh, infants up to? Okay, so um, when the mother is an inpatient, obviously we can take the, you know, the infant can stay up until 12 months of age. Ideally, at point of admission, we um, assess the each individual case. So about 10 months is generally a cut-off point because, um, and we say 10 months, because it that, that gives us a very narrow window anyway by the time the mum comes in and goes assessment um, and any sort of treatment uh, that's required because what we don't want to do is bring uh, mums and their babies into the unit um, and then have to terminate the placement uh, uh, when the baby turns 12 months old but their treatment is not fully concluded or it's not you know it's it, that would be very disruptive and not a very good experience for for that family um, so when we are admitting at around the nine, 10 month mark, if we try and make a very clear pathway or plan of care and treatment from the very beginning to try and prevent that. Excellent. Thanks, uh, Kirsten. Has anybody else got anything to add on, on that question? Or if not, we'll move on. Um, question from Karen Middleton. Um, fantastic to hear the achievements of the union in its opening year. I'll echo that. Uh, and it's clear that there's a commitment for an accessible option for women in North Wales to be able to access life-saving support. Um, uh, Karen's question is, what is the timetable women and families should expect for this to become a reality? Sharon, I guess that question might be best to, to you. When, when are we going to see these important developments? For, for North Wales, I can see Adele's on uh, the meter side, so I don't know whether she would be able to add anything. All I can say is that we had a really uh, great meeting with our NHS England colleagues on Friday. So there is commitment to get this um, underway as soon as possible. Um, but there are things that we, obviously we um, need to do or NHS England need to do before we can progress. But as soon as we have dates, we'll share those. I don't know whether Adele has anything else. Sorry, Adele, I'm putting you on the spot there to add to that. I don't have anything else okay. um, currently to add other than to say that um, obviously it's good to see the meeting went ahead on Friday. I wasn't there on Friday and obviously there is um, some work ongoing with North Wales because we need to confirm some things around capital. So it's good to see the progress, but I can't give you an exact uh, time scale on it. That's great to hear, and it was it was great to hear from from Lynn earlier the commitment from the the deputy minister, wasn't there, to to, to progress this? Because in celebrating the fantastic achievements of the unit in South Wales, it's really important that we recognise that still there are women and families across Wales who who still um, don't have the access uh, uh, that, that that they need. Anita, question for you that's come in on the chat. Um, can I ask Anita, please, about working with other partners, particularly social services and anything learned going forward? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have um, within our workforce establishment, we do have a social worker dedicated to the unit um, who supports that linking with um, other health boards in other local authorities around safeguarding, around social care needs. Um, we, we have learned lots of lessons. Um, one of them is that it's actually really challenging to hold all those threads um, for families, um, but that with will and determination, actually it works well. Um, so we have um, had quite good feedback, but we have regular uh, 
professionals and multidisciplinary team meetings that are always at the same time every week. So people who have a service user are using the service um, know, you know from the point of admission that their slot or their um, time for that discussion and sharing of information is set, it's planned in advance. Um, and that seems to have worked quite well. Um, I think uh, probably like many areas, one of the things we've had to really focus on is making sure that on the transitional points, so coming into the unit and then um, through back into the community, that those, those links and those um, communications happen at the appropriate time. Um, but, but by and large, I think the partnerships are working pretty well. Um, I think there's always fine tuning to be done, but I, I think they're working pretty well. And I think having that dedicated role also helps in terms of local authority, particularly. Excellent. Thank you very much, Anita. If any of the other speakers want to jump in at any stage, please do. But there's um, lots of questions coming in now, so I'm going to uh, uh, move on. Uh, Matthew, a question that may be best for you. What Can I ask about the types of intervention therapy that are delivered with the, in, within the unit, please? Yeah, of course. Um, so for interventions for um, the dyad, uh, so the mum and baby, then we would kind of, I suppose, go with um, depending on the actual individual assessment. So assessment of need, but what would be available is would be CBT, which is the evidence base currently sits with. We would also offer VIG, uh, EMDR, and I suppose there's a wider kind of narrative in the, the ward, then we use a lot of narrative therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy, and compassion focused therapy. So I suppose those three models at the end is very much around the narrative of we approach care in general, and then suppose specific modalities, then we would be looking at VIG, EMDR, and um, CBT. Thanks, Matt. Um, There's a question from Mark uh, Williams uh, about support for mother with psychosis during the antenatal period. Is there any support that can be given from the unit uh, for for women be in that international period before they deliver. Um, Kirsten, is that best addressed to yourself? We do outreach uh, to other units, particularly acute wards. Um, so myself and Dr. Nobler historically have, have um, um, attended MDTs via teams. Uh, Dr. Noblet and uh, has gone out to um, act physically towards to review patients as well. Um, and also we um, would um, expect the specialist community perinatal teams to be involved in all of these processes and for us to work collaboratively. Um, if the woman is before 32 weeks of pregnancy, I think predominantly the lead would be taken by the specialist community perinatal team post 32 weeks. Mm -hmm. We would take more, as I said, that more joint working approach alongside the community teams. And then um, we could look at what the, the best course of action for that woman would be. We can admit it antenatally, whether that would be appropriate, whether we would continue to support in the acute set, setting, um, that, that would be a very individualised um, process at that point in time. Excellent, thank you. And a further question I suspect is from, from the fantastic Mark Williams. Um, um, if not, it's a question um, very close to his heart. Um, um, are there plans for screening and supporting the partner if the mum is in the unit? Um, who'd want to take that? Anita, you were nodding away there. Yeah, yeah. so currently um, there, there are already some um, work streams happening within our practice on Ina Goodbye. Um, so one of the things that our occupational therapist will do is undertake a, an initial screening with um, significant others, um, particularly if they live at home with um, mother and infant, um, just to think about what what individual needs. So whilst we may not currently have the resource to provide, in many cases, individual therapy, although I'm aware Matt and the um, psychological therapies team do do some individual sessions with significant others where it's a, a planned part of uh, mother's care. Um, the, the idea that we can identify needs and signpost support um, advise, communicate with other professionals in the community who might be better placed to meet those needs 
of an individual who isn't admitted to the unit. Um, uh, that that work is already happening. I think there's certainly room for improvement. I think now we're not working under the same COVID restrictions and we've got that face-to-face -face access and that um, opportunity to, to be alongside in a more real-time um, practical way. I think those opportunities will grow. And as Kirsten mentioned earlier, we are looking at some more focused pieces of work and looking at where there's work happening in colleagues in other MBUs where things are more developed and more um, streamlined and standardised. Uh, but yeah, so I think we're, we're doing some really good bits of work that need building on. Um, uh, and that's one of our main priority focuses. But please keep checking back in with us and asking us about that and keeping us on track with it. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Anita. As I say to all the speakers, jump in if 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 people have got anything to add. There's lots more questions coming in, though, so I'll try and get through as many as we can. Uh, Matt, perhaps a question for you about how the unit works with third sector colleagues. Uh, yeah, so I suppose it's dependent on which which third sector we're talking about because it's such a wide area. So um, certainly at the moment, I'm linking in lots with certainly postpartum psychosis, charities around that area and thinking about how we kind of strengthen links. Um, I suppose that, the, again, it's really important to think about that we're only a very small part of a mother, infant and family's journey. So I suppose the, the third sector become really valuable before and after, and that's where those kind of links are really kind of important. So the kind of peer support workers. Um, so I think I've kind of, and Ira and Bevan are very, very good at the moment. Um, and certainly I'm doing a lot of conservation with um, Sarah Douglas on how we improve uh, our access to peer support workers, but also then how we can think about moving forward, how peer support has become a part of the MBU as well. So I suppose that it's a growing part of us and we've still got lots and lots of work to do, but it's something I'm very keen to strengthen. Okay, quick couple of questions before we finish. A question about um, looking at the stats on the first year, um, the, uh, the demographic of women's who've access care to understand if services are accessible to all, including women who face inequalities and additional barriers. And that related to a further question from um, um, Charlie uh, Colgate, women living in poverty or women from ethnic minority groups sometimes experience inequalities in access to perinatal mental health care. Could I ask some of the staff to talk about how they address inequality in their work? Who'd, who'd, who'd like to take that, those questions about um, uh, uh, inequality. Anita? Yeah, yeah, I think absolutely um, essential points to, to make, really. Um, from our point of view, within the one year review, yes, those demographic stats will be being looked at just to see if there are things we can learn to, to do our checks and balances with ourselves around um, Wales and where, if any, um, we can influence those inequalities and ensure that we're not replicating them on the unit. Um, from, from our perspective, um, I suppose it, a lot, all services would say, oh, you know, we, we would like to think that inequality, you know, inequalities don't exist within our, um, within our work. But I, I think one of the things we do know is um, poverty um, and so uh, one of the things that is coming out is just having a unit that needs you need to have, to have transport to access those kind of very basic fundamental things you need to have transport to access us um, easily um, those things have, have come up certainly um, we do keep um, data around demographics um, in terms of um, ethnic minority on background um, and so some of that will be being looked at um, in, in a more formalised way through the review so um, I don't want to preempt the outcomes of that but certainly can reassure people that that will be being considered as a, a specific um, part of the review. Fantastic thank you Anita and the last question so we're going to have to to move on I'm afraid I'm not going to get to all the questions being asked. Julia um, says it's an amazing achievement. Congratulations to everybody involved. Given the level of service needs in the first year of operation around 30 admissions, do you estimate that six bedded unit is sufficient? Are there plans to expand the unit if the demand increases? I'm going to combine that with how would you like to see the unit develop, expand 
in the future and i'm going to give you all 20 seconds each just to to look to the future and 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 and, and uh, how, how you'd like to think things about kirsten let's go to you first on that one i'd like to see the an increase in beds because we've still had occasions where we've had to we have been followed we've operated a waiting list and women still have had to access um, English uh, MBO beds, um, and I'd like to prevent that from happening in the future. I think there's the foundations have been la laid, which has been really great for this first year, but I think there's lots of development to still happen going forwards. Excellent. Matthew, perhaps go to you. you next, Matt. Uh, I think an increase in beds is needed, but I also think having the rooms attached to it that can support the family so we can work on those family links whilst mum and baby are on the kind of unit is going to be imperative for strengthening the work that we do and stopping mums needing feeling that need that narrative of pulling them home. Anita where how do you think see things going in the future? Yeah I guess um, the beds will be reviewed as part of WISC's review and they'll um, have all the data to hand to make those sort of recommendations um for me yeah I think the, the footprint of the unit could do with being bigger whether that's more beds or actually whether it's more space for families partners siblings um facilities and yeah I, I think just consolidating what we've done this year and continuing to keep in touch um with our service users their families and the wider networks to make sure that we're any development we do is in line with meeting the most important people's needs, which is women, families, and infants. And that's my that's my hope. Fantastic, Anita. And then last but certainly not least, we go to our national clinical lead for perinatal mental health. And um, where the power is, Sharon, how do you <laughs> see things developing? Where where would you like to see things develop? No pressure there, Dean. No, no pressure at all. <laughs> Uh, you know what, we, we've made an absolutely an amazing start. Uh, this is part of transformational change, isn't this? So there's a lot that we can be looking at um, in the future. I think, you know, we've got great relationships with the specialist teams and the wider community workforce. Strengthening that would be fantastic. Um, a, a recent review has just, you know, shown that need to work um, or to focus on the families and the children and the siblings. Um, but yeah, we great start. And of course, the beds, you know, we're, we're all mentioning the beds. Uh, it, it's been very busy. And as Kirsten has said, there have been occasions where women have had to go out to England. So if we can prevent that, that'd be great. So, Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sharon. Thanks to all of the speakers for their fantastic presentations and their response to the questions. We do have...